Have you ever gone to a game store or some other public place to play a session of D&D and then found yourself shy, scared, or maybe a little unprepared? Wouldn't you like to be able to go to those places and still have an unbeatable session? Well, today we're going to talk about how to dungeon master in a public place, and we have a special treat today. We're joined by Tavern Keeper or Tavern Yeah, Wench. Tavern Keeper, yeah. <laughs> tavern Lord? Uh, exactly. Tavern Ooh. Lord, uh, Andrew Ashby from We Geek Together. I like that. Uh, this is How to Be a Better DM, and uh, we are the show dedicated to helping overwhelmed and maybe confused dungeon masters actually start to complete campaigns that they're proud of. And I'm Justin Lewis, joined by uh, Cade Notley and Tanner Wayland. Hey. Hello. <laughs> And uh, together, we've been helping Dungeon Masters solve these problems for over 130 episodes now, and uh, we'll, we'll keep going strong. I thought you were going to say 130 years. Was like, well, I mean, uh, fantasy <laughs> years. Vampires. Definitely fantasy years. So, uh, yeah. But, but uh, thanks for joining us, Andy. Heck yeah, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's always fun to do these uh, in-person shows. And for those of you who listen to the end of today's show... Andy is going to give you a little bit of a teaser, uh, really a surprise for the upcoming Dead Wars event, which is a world record-breaking D&D game, 3,000 plus, plus players on May 3rd and May 4th. And for those of you who are outside Utah, outside the United States even, this is going to be even more important and more fun and cool for you. Uh, but but let's, let's jump Agreed. right into it. So you are in a very interesting situation. Compared to most DMs out there, you have a. a I store. run a gaming store. Yeah, yeah. Gaming store. <laughs> I, it's a public place. Yeah. Exactly. So, so you've been able to see, probably both the good and the bad in terms of dungeon masters coming, and I think probably the best place to start is, when it comes to being a dungeon master in a public place, what are the rules of etiquette that people should follow, and sometimes maybe they don't. Yeah, absolutely. You. There's a different uh, implied standard when you are playing in public. Like, if you're playing at home on the couch with your other buddies, you could be laying on the floor or have your feet up in the air, you know, eating Cheetos, whatever, that kind of <laughs> stuff, uh, on your belly, that kind of stuff. Your friends don't <laughs> mind, but in a public space, you probably don't get away with that. And if you do, well, people will be looking at you weird. So you do kind of have to be aware of that. That being said, um, if you have a good group of players, the energy and the fun that you can have at the table, I say is completely comparable to uh, what you can have at home. If, if you have the right group, it, it's still a blast to play. And sometimes playing in the right atmosphere can even get you more uh, in, in the state of mind. No, absolutely. Uh, do you find that, uh, or have you ever heard any people like that play at your store, do they ever feel self-conscious or worry about their volume or anything like that? It's usually new players who feel self-conscious about it. I mean, new players were already self-conscious about playing D&D for the first time, and so True. then it's just kind of compounded on when they're playing in public. We offer a lot of... Uh, experiences for brand new players i have dms and brand new players come in all the time and so if you have a good dm who's welcoming who can break the ice and assure you like oh hey this is a totally fine place to be a little silly maybe use a silly voice and not know all the rules it's okay if you don't know your character sheet we're just here to have fun and so i think really what you guys probably agree with the dungeon master sets the tone of the game yeah so if the dungeon master's relaxed having a good time the players will get there too pretty quick hmm. I, I think that's a very interesting point and, and i think also to a certain extent the store that you go to which, which let's be honest most public places you're going to play at are game stores good place uh, uh, yeah very good place <laughs> i think in a way the store also sets the tone a little bit um for example you know it would be very different you go to one store and there's two other groups playing and then you go to a different store and everyone is playing magic the gathering you're the only D, &D group for sure for sure um th it, that there's an interesting dynamic to other people playing if you see another table playing D, &D and they're having a good time um that can sometimes feed into your energy and you're like oh yeah this is a good place to be also, sometimes it can be distracting. You know, if you see that 
boy, that table looks like they're having a blast and they're really fun and and they're laughing and cheering and then you're at your table and everybody's just kind of staring at each other and it's really awkward. Making dice towers. It, it can absolutely, <laughs> yeah. It could it can um, amplify that that feeling. So I, I feel like game stores, you can get some of the best games and also some of the worst games. Absolutely. But it's worth the risk. Yeah. Actually, in that in that situation, what would you do <clears throat> or, or counsel a, a dungeon master to do when they are the table with players that are a little bit stone faced, maybe, and there's a table that everyone's kind of jealous of and maybe comparing themselves to? Oh, that's a good question. Um, hmm. Well, the dungeon master is the one who can set the tone and the the level of engagement and fun so if you can just be like hey you guys let's do a shopping episode or let's uh, orcs attack just suddenly you're just like oh shoot the dragon just crashed (laughs) through the window what are you guys gonna do like if if there's low energy at your table i feel like one of your jobs as a dungeon master is to read that that read your players and be like hey all right they're not engaging with me they're getting distracted by other stuff they're off reading the comic books on the shelf (laughs) i need to have orcs attack now and get your attention and light this tree on fire because uh yeah you guys aren't you guys aren't engaging with me um and that's not an easy thing for brand new dms to do but if you, as you get more experienced, you'll you'll start to learn how to engage your players differently, and yeah, yeah, that that's that's it's a trick, but you can do it. Yeah, I. Oh, sorry, Caden. Did you have something? No. Uh, I just was thinking about what you were saying about like pivoting, and I mean we all know that that's so important even in a home game, but when you're in public, I think that you need to kind of have that in mind because I would argue that you can't do any type of session the first time your players are playing in a public place, right? Because they're going to be self-conscious. They're going to be uh, in an unfamiliar situation like you were mentioning. So it's like, okay, what do my players do really well at? Is it a shopping episode? Is it one where they're mostly just, you know, th- you know, having fun talking with a goofy NPC? Then that's the one I need to plan, at least for the first time, right? Absolutely. Yeah, but then if they're really into combat and if that's where they really shine, start out with that. And then, you know, maybe on your second or third time, kind of work into those other areas where maybe they don't uh, feel as comfortable or those types of sessions. Heck yeah. So <clears throat> kind of radical. Oh, did you want to say something, kid? No. Sorry. You raised your hand. <laughs> you guys uh, are so polite. I know. My yeah. other, when I'm, I'm just like, ah, screw you. Because yeah. I do my podcast with my brother, so I'm like, <laughs> well, see, see, that's I don't care about you. Yeah, exactly. I, just keep, I keep seeing Caden's hand move, and I'm like, yes? It's because I'm, I'm a really tall guy, <laughs> yeah. so I this just is have a, to. This is a short table. Yeah, yeah he's, a, he's a Goliath, and I'm a dwarf. Or cramped in here. We have very different needs and stuff but that's a weird way to say it <laughs> i wish i didn't say that <laughs> it's uh, on record we yeah. ain't heading that out <laughs> um, a dm pro tip we all have our needs yes okay? exactly uh so uh very kind of radical question is a game store a good place for a first time dm to run their first session oh boy i love this question because i have theories i have absolute theories so i think a game store is a fantastic place for a first session for many people but not for everyone and really this is what it comes down to when you where where are you going to hold your your D session okay if you are a college student and you're sharing uh, a, an apartment with these other college guys, <laughs> and you're bringing over your friends, okay, and you're crammed around a little kitchen table, and then your roommate comes in, and he's watching TV, or if you're kind of a young adult, and you've got kids who are running around screaming, and they're watching Bluey, like, it all depends <laughs> on what your at-home environment is. Now, if you are a dungeon master who's invested in a basement and they've turned it into like the ultimate gaming space with like LED lights and a whole library of miniatures, a game store will never be able to beat that. Mm. 
but a game store will absolutely beat the pants off of college apartments, busy homes, because really the, the most important thing to me is the immersion. And there's so many things in a, a house that can distract from that, be it a TV, being at crying kids, being at a pet. There's so many things that distract from that. So it really depends on your play environment. If you have a, a noisy apartment and a lot of distractions, think about going to your local game store because there's a lot of local game stores that have um, t uh, corner tables, mm -hmm. tables that are far away from them. There's even game stores and uh, you guys are sitting in a private room that we're working on to turn this into a private room for gaming. There's game stores that have private rooms for gaming. And so you could absolutely get a really immersive, quiet game. And it, it even depends on when you play. If you come in on a Wednesday night, for example, and there's no events on the game store, that's going to be a really chill store. Versus if you come in on Friday Night Magic, you know, so there's, <laughs> there's so many variables to that. My answer is game stores are a fantastic place to play and definitely a step up with a lot of the busy things that people have. And But if you have a dedicated gaming space, like, use that dedicated, you built that dedicated gaming space, use it. You know, don't, you know, don't go to your local game store if you, if you can beat it. Absolutely. So, so yeah, that's that's my two cents. You know, I, I would even add on to that because, and I know not every game store is like this, but at least here at We Geek Together, I really like that you have a lot of minis available. You have, you have a lot of tools, right? Like a lot of the tables have a screen on it. And I feel like for at least newer DMs, having those tools that they don't need to buy themselves, it just makes it an extra step easier, you know? Yeah, well, that's absolutely a focus for me. I want this to be a D and d a TTRPG store. So yeah. I absolutely provide those. I know there are other game stores that provide that to some extent. Yeah. I work hard on my atmosphere. I've somewhat soundproofed my store. Um, so I've been really mindful about a few things. And we play like taverny music in the background. <laughs> it's yes. not like dubstep or, or ABBA or anything like that. <laughs> it's, it's kind of like theme appropriate music. And so like I really leaned into that. So I guess the advice is go to your local game store first. See what the vibe is. Is it a clean place? Is it a happy place? Is it, you know, does the staff treat you well? Are the tables nice? Do they have a gear for DMs? If they do, heck yeah, that's a great place. But if you go and you're like, I want to play D&D, &D, and, like, they kind of sneer at you, and they're like, well, <laughs> you can go play on that table over there, and it's just, like, a plastic <laughs> table, and the chairs are, like, sticky, then don't go there. We've yeah. had that experience. Of, uh, I don't want to say. I want to say it. <laughs> I might know which one we're talking yeah. about. There. Oh, now we're thing. gonna rank our rank our least favorite stores. Yes. Oh, go specifically stores that are near us. And they, you know, <laughs> but they're probably not listening, so it's whatever. Brutal. Um, <clears throat> actually, on that note, I, I would say uh, to to kind of build upon that point, uh, stores that do a lot of war gaming in my guess, in my opinion, will likely be a little bit more... Um, they, comfortable. Comfortable, yeah, for, for, for Dungeons & Dragons they got players. terrain. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Compared to, you know, uh, your stores that are literally just comic book stores, like they don't even have games. Yeah. And then, you know, your, your trading card and, and uh, uh, collectibles stores, uh, those are still awesome, and they might have, you know, like Andy said, a table in the back or something like that. Um, but I'd, I'd also hazard a guess that for most stores well obviously depending on their vibe if you were to like say hey can i maybe like help make the mood more conducive to D, &D players like you know i i would guess that they would be a little bit open to that because and you might have to correct me but a lot of gaming stores don't make tons of money yeah yeah they you know it's it's a hard market so if you could be like hey can i bring in music for my table mm -hmm. is it okay if uh you know we take over this whole table do you have any terrain that we might use um do you have a, a private room like if if they're a good game store they will want to help you out mm -hmm. and they'll be like hey this is what we got here's what i recommend that kind of stuff if they're a good game store <laughs> <laughs> absolutely well um one other thing i would say about this is if you're a new dm coming to game stores might be a better place because they, you know, as, as Andy has said, you can start off as a player, probably with like one of the people that own the store. Um, I lived in Italy for about two years 
and uh, yeah, it, it, nah, you know. I didn't know that. That's yeah, yeah, cool. yeah. So uh, um, while I was there, we found like a gaming den, and that's really the only way I could describe it because it looked like I, I don't know how to, you know, it looked like it was supposed to be like some basement, but it was a game store, and everything was like plaster, like the inside of Luke's how home in, in uh, you know oh, Tatooine that's uh, cool. yeah it was super weird I don't think they did it on purpose it was just like <laughs> just you know, how it looked exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> but the people there were so nice and they literally like the owners teach us how to play any game we wanted to mm. you know I learned how to play zombie side there which is an awesome you know board game but they did have D&D there if we wanted to but my you know the person I was with didn't want to but, but my point is um, Rightfully so, because it's satanic. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, come on. You know, the 70s were right about a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but you can learn as a player from the people in the game store, and then they can, like, you know, if they're willing, they could probably coach you to, through your first session, yeah. right? Yeah, or they know DMs, or they have resources. Exactly. Yeah, no, local game stores are fantastic wealths of knowledge for the community great people you can find people who play even if you even if the store owners can't help you there's other people exactly have you ever intervened into somebody's session uh, you've probably been asked for advice while yes. people are running uh-huh no so i have uh very important to me in store rules okay. uh and they're like games are pg-13 um uh no politics uh leave the politics out of the store um just kind of basic very basic safety rules um and i noticed well I, I'll, I'll give two stories real quick i noticed at this one table one of the occupants was crying Ooh. um and it, and but it turned out one of the players at the table was being very controlling over this player they were telling him no you should do this this is how you play your character you're not playing your character right and that kind of stuff so they were being very controlling and the dm actually came up to me and they're like hey can you can you help me with this and, and i had kind of been watching it i'm like oh yeah um and so i went over and i pulled the player to the side and i gave him a warning and i showed him my rules and i'm like i don't know if you're doing this on purpose but this is you're taking away the fun from another player that's the other rule uh we're here we're all here to have fun but it can't be at the expense of another person and so you're taking away the fun of that person's character. I understand you, you know how to play and well, <laughs> but um, their choices, that's where they get fun. So you, you shouldn't be telling them. And so I was able to diffuse it and uh, they were able to play. And the, the, the person who was crying um, was able to, to get back into the game and it felt a bit safer. And, the, and so they ended the game. And I don't know if they kept on playing together or not, but like, at, like they were able to like finish the session at least. Um, so that so that was one story, and then another story. Again, I saw some people. I saw like one person who was like almost in tears, and I saw somebody else who was like nervously pacing up and down the floor. <laughs> oh, and gosh. I was like, "What is going on over here?" So like, I go over to the table, um, and I'm like, "Hey, you know, is everything okay? Is everything going on, or what's going on?" And they're like, "Yeah, we just had a TPK, and <laughs> everyone died at the table, okay. and it was it was like a two year campaign." And the poor dungeon oh. master was like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> like, the poor dungeon master couldn't believe that they had done that. And But they were really good players. They, they didn't blame the dungeon master. They were like, hey, you know, that's how the dice in the story went. We don't blame you. That wasn't you being a bad dungeon master. That's just, that's just how the story ended up winding. And so they were actually a really close group of friends. And so then what I did it for them is I got them all uh, a bottle of mead so Aww. that you can like <laughs> pour it out for, you yeah. know, <laughs> in memory of all the fallen heroes and wow. stuff That's like nice. that. That's and, super cool. Um, and, but I think that goes back to if you've got a good game store where the uh, staff care, they're going to keep an eye on the stuff. And that helps with another level of safety that you can't get in a private home. In a private home, you're kind of at the mercy of the other occupants there. And so I would say if you're going to play with brand new people that you don't really know, maybe you just met on Discord or on Facebook, maybe guarantee your first few games are at a game store mm. where they have to be well behaved and it's a much more safer space before you invite them into your own home and then you realize, oh, shoot, this guy's a creeper. You know, I do yeah. not want to play with this yeah. guy. So, so maybe I didn't really think about that till now. But yeah. game stores offer another safety level. level yeah. to that. Do you have to prepare yeah. your employees to be stewards of the game? 
Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. No, they, I've trained my employees. Here's our culture. Here's our rules. Keep an eye on things as they're going. Um, you know, be attentive. Don't Great. just be, I don't know, not doing anything. Yeah. So look for that in a game store. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it sounds like in that way, uh, it's sort of like dating on like, you know, the dating apps and stuff. Definitely play in a public space with people you don't know. Right. And game stores are like filling that niche. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I also feel like this kind of makes me appreciate more DMs who, regardless of place, uh, are able to create a safe environment, period, mm-hmm. you know? Because I was thinking about it, I was like, oh, there's a reason why you'd play publicly, you know, in a game store versus a library, you know? <laughs> uh, just because mm-hmm. one is, hey, it's kind of built for that and it's expected and you can feel safe there. One, that that's not really typical. And I think we take it for granted, like you were saying, about like while we're playing at home, assuming that's a safe place. But that's that's not always the case, because sometimes people are coming in with weird uh, power dynamics or like weird agendas and and realizing like, hey, whether you're public or at home, if you don't set up the right environment, it's not going to be fun, period. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the, the DM is the one who sets those safety. You guys have talked about session oh, yeah. zero, yeah. safety, yeah. all that kind but, of stuff. So you guys know. But, but funnily enough, I don't think we've actually talked about like real life safety. You know, right, Tanner? I, I think that should be uh, one of our next topics because it's a very interesting one that I don't think a lot of people, you know, think about or talk about. So thank yeah. you for that. That's a, that's a really <laughs> cool idea. Now there, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> there you go. That one's on the house, boys. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this moves too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting, though, yeah. uh, the whole uh, player community. Because, like, I love people who play D&D, but we get a whole range of characters and people and players and that kind of stuff. And especially uh-huh. when you're starting out or mm-hmm. you don't know who you're playing with, uh it's it's a whole new ground and so mm-hmm. you, you it's rolling the dice literally on who you're playing with <laughs> yeah uh-huh. and it's almost more about like respect too right because it's like hey not everyone needs to be the same kind of person because you specifically have that rule it's like hey keep politics out of it keep other kind of stuff out of it that, that can be contentious and, and that for so many people you might think like oh but if i'm if i'm playing with someone who maybe i don't share the same interests or other things aside from D with Maybe you think that doesn't work, but it's like, no, if you have those kind of common respect kind of boundaries, then, then you're going to be fine. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. I and I preach, like, um, if you've got the right group of players, you can play any game. Mm-hmm. Oh, you, yeah. you can play the most racist and dark, <laughs> grim, dark. I'm not saying you should do that, but I'm just like, you can dive into some of the most interesting dark yeah. morbid topics yeah um and, and like you know people talk about safety but like if you're playing with the right group of people you can approach so many interesting mm-hmm. things mm-hmm. um if you're at the right table with your right players and don't you dare expose that to people who weren't ready or or expecting that in your game so yeah. but 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 for playing in public, for playing in my game <laughs> store, let's not have any of those <laughs> more morbid, grim, dark, <laughs> racist, politic games, please. Let's not, not my store. Yeah, save that. N- never mind. I save, won't say that. <laughs> save that for your mom's basement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, sort of taking a different tack now. Uh, obviously, when playing, we've already talked a little bit about, you know, having the boisterous group over in the corner that's having super, you know, a lot of fun. But how have you seen DMs compensate for being in a loud environment, specifically with sound? Because I I know that that can be a challenge, especially Mm. if you have people, you know, my wife, she's a little bit hard of hearing with one of her, one of her ears. Yeah. Sound sensitivity. Exactly. So, so how have you seen DMs deal with that? If you have, you just got to be mindful of where you sit and kind of what the environment is before you get in to the space. That's about the best advice I could give. Like, sorry. I've seen some local game stores where they just huddle all the tables into a corner. (laughs) And so it's like an amplifying chamber, just like echoes and it just bounces off the walls. And it's just, it's like a lunch cafeteria in there. Um, I have been very conscious about my store design to like, I have a wall that splits down the entire middle of my store. So like 
you can be on one side of the store, it could be pretty loud, and then when you walk to the other side of the store, it's suddenly a lot more quieter. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I've I've taken steps to really try to separate noise and be mindful of that. Um, I don't. I can't say other game stores have, and so you just gotta you, you just gotta try your best. You know, maybe pick that corner table, um, see how the game store is before that, because no matter where you are you're going to be battling the environment Mm -hmm. be it at home with your kids watching bluey be it at a local game store maybe a library is the best place for you to play as long as you guys are just kind of you know talking normally Um, a local library would be totally chill with people coming and playing D&D if you're just like talking normally and you aren't like flipping tables or throwing (laughs) dice or anything like that so that so that might be the option. So yeah. I couldn't play in a library. Yeah, save that for your mom's basement. <laughs> yeah. You flip tables constantly. Yes. It's, I mean, it's a you problem. Can, those arms look like they can flip tables pretty easily. <laughs> yeah, I just got those are arm flipping so tables. Uh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> um, sort of a weird question, but have you ever maybe something like this doesn't exist? But have you ever thought about like foldable panels that are somewhat soundproof oh, yeah. that you can like? Kind of coordinate. Yeah, you know those uh, those uh, Chinese changing. Yeah, screens, some like yes, kind of yes. Things. So I have one of those, and mm. I've been kind of playing with yeah. it. Maybe I have like three or four of them, kind of stuffed in the corner, right. and then we put a blanket over it, that kind of stuff. Right. So if there's two tables that are right next to each other, you could just get one of those little folding screens, put it in between to give you a little bit of privacy. Yeah, that's yeah. a pretty easy, cheapish solution. Yeah. So I have one, and that's I awesome. and I do that every now and then. I see. I also have like a giant standing projector screen that i also sometimes set up so Mm -hmm. so you know you know talk to your local game store see if they don't have a private room can can i bring in my own folding (laughs) screen you know just so i can like get this corner table private to ourselves i'd say yes that's really yeah. cool. Have you guys seen Get Smart with Steve Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, cone, of cone of silence. silence. Oh, yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, just a cone of yeah. silence for the whole table. <laughs> oh, that would be ideal. Great. Can you imagine? Dude, that would be so awesome. And actually, that leads us into the kind of the next question and, and sort Jeez. of the last question. <laughs> I know. Um, what are some of the coolest tools or resources you've seen Dungeon Masters bring in or use just in general that in a public setting also would be good? Um, great question. Uh, of course, I'm going to draw a blank right now. Well, I've, I've seen so many different DMs come in with so many different things. I've seen DMs with, like, uh, DM screens that have a screen built into their DM screen, and then True. they use the TV table, and then all of their players have, like, tablets, and then they, they're all, like, connected <laughs> and stuff, and VTT. Like, I've seen, I've seen some of the most craziest tech... And I've also seen just, you know, a bunch of high schoolers with paper and and pencils. And and uh, I, I don't have any recommendation no. on Kier, sadly, cool. because I believe you can have a kick-ass game with just pens and paper. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. So. Absolutely. Sorry, I swore. I don't know. You bleep that No, out. that's totally fine. <laughs> Our show is PG-13. There we go. Yeah. I can say hey, the A word once. We got a one go, and we used it. I used it. Nobody else could say it. F word once, can't you? No. Nope. <laughs> oh, that, that's, that's right. right. That's right. No. The second, for those of you listening, uh, this is a little bit of podcast behind the scenes. The second you say an F word, you have to mark the show as explicit. I'm otherwise, serious? yes, oh. yes. Well, fudge. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, now that we're at the end of the show again. Uh, <laughs> wow, that's so cool how that works. <laughs> Time travel. Uh, Magic. But, but thanks, thanks so much for being here with us, Heck Andy. Yeah. We've, we've really enjoyed it. Um, I could talk about this forever. So. Perfect. I mean, well, well, we'll come back <laughs> definitely because we have a podcast you. talking about this kind of stuff. But uh, let's let's finish up the show. Um, first of all, first of all, uh, we want you to tell everyone how they can reach out to you, support you, see what you're up to. But also, tell us a little bit about Dead Wars, and if possible. Reveal secret, your secret. Secret exactly. stuff. Secret, exactly. secret secrets. Yeah, so I'm Andy. I run a game store in Provo called We Geek Together. If you're in the nearby area, come and enjoy um, some mead and play at my tables. It's a it's a, it's a great time. Um, and you, you can find me on all the social medias except for X. Uh, I'm not on X, but everything else is under We Geek Together. So I got YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, all that jazz. 
Um, and uh, if you want to support us, I'm actually revolutionizing. Boy, that's a that's a very uh, prideful thing to say, but I, I believe I'm going to be the future of local game stores in the bit. So we Woo. we yeah, we've got some really exciting stuff coming. Speaking of, um, this is just a little teaser, but the Dead Wars is going to be the biggest game ever played history i mean we did one last year and this is gonna beat the pants off of it <laughs> but if you can't make it to the event which is in provo utah which is in provo utah okay and you should definitely come because we're doing some amazing stuff there but if you can't make it to the event i'm going to tell you guys how you can still aid the war april 2nd you can fight in the war more news coming awesome love it yeah love it uh definitely check that out um but now to end the show let's just each go around and give one final tip for the dungeon master venturing into the public place who might be a little afraid might be a little scared and perhaps embarrassed and this this tip is going to get you through that shame embarrassment and fear and you're going to have a great experience uh, so we'll start with Caden, and we'll just go down. Putting you on the spot. Yeah. You got to go first. I hope you got something. Sure. I'll, <laughs> I'll come up with something. Uh, I think my advice would be um, take advantage of the the tools that you're going to have. Make the best of it. Um, try to forget that there are other people around you watching. Uh, just, you know commit just like you would if you have players in front of you to an NPC you know the the other people who are around you probably don't care what you sound like or if you mess up so just yeah that, that would be my advice just get out there and do it love it yeah you you stole mine I, uh, I normally say to commit <laughs> well you told him to go first yes I did <laughs> that's, that's my fault um, normally I say you should commit just like you know the Jonas Brothers but if you yeah. want to know about that you just gotta email don't. me or whatever or Instagram but uh, yeah, since, steal Nike yeah yeah but since he he took my advice I think the next thing I would say is go to your local game store get uh -huh. to know the manager thank you uh, hang out there a little bit kind of size up the spot and then when you go you should be excited because it's kind of a fun experience you're you're in this new situation new scenario and you're going to have tools like Caden said that you didn't have before and it can really become sort of this event rather than you know we're just playing D&D with some friends at this place you can kind of make it special for yourself <clears throat> Well, that was going to be mine. No, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, so I, I think for me, it would be uh, make, make sure you're creating a place and a group that you're fine playing anywhere with. Uh, because for me, I, especially during this conversation, I realized I was like, if, I, if I'm nervous, then there's a reason for it. Hmm. But if I'm with the right people who we just have fun with anytime, then that's going to work out, right? Uh, and also, like, if you go to a game store or to a, any place in your local city that you feel, like, is a very welcoming place, then that's also a great place to do it. And so if you, if you feel like, oh, man, I'm not sure, then you can create that. You can create that kind of group, that kind of setting. Uh, and, and don't settle for anything less because it's like you should, you should only enjoy your time playing, right? Well said. Well said. Dungeon Masters, remember... Your players are just as scared of you <laughs> as you are of them. Maybe, maybe more. <laughs> and the other people at other tables are also just as scared of you as you are of them. Yep. So just, you know, take that. Take that with some pride and be the scariest DM you can. <laughs> I, love it. I love it and uh hopefully that spur uh, kind of pushes you on to many tpks uh let us know you, 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 <laughs> no 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 maybe that's not good advice exactly I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't, don't be scary exactly, don't be scary exactly. um well, well thanks again for joining us on how to be a better dm Heck just yeah. like always you fun. know we're we're the podcast to help you the dungeon master who already has so much on their plate actually get to each session and each campaign and and do a little bit better each time uh we'll be back next week with another awesome and fun episode i've been justin uh, this is tanner and kaden and obviously andy and uh next time 
uh, or until next time, let's go ahead and roll initiative. Heck yeah.